ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark and today together with my group mates, we are all about to discuss the article 1772 which is the distribution of loss and profits. So this article is more focused on the profits and the losses. It is made by a firm which is um, equally distributed to all of its partners and provisions. So after these words, there will be nine reporters next on me who will discuss to you the core or what is all about the article 1772. So keep watching, think, grow and learn. Article 1772 states that in every contract of partnership having a capital of 3,000 or more in money or property shall appear in public instrument, which means it must be recorded in the Office of Securities Exchange Commission. It affects the liability of the partnership and the members thereof to the third persons. For the distribution of profits under Article 1797 of the Civil Code, the profit of partners shall depend upon the agreement of the partners. In case they fail to stipulate, the party's share in the profit shall be in proportion to what he or she may have contributed. For example, Robbie, Pon Pon, Lenin, and Dana formed a restaurant business. Their contributions were 10000 20,000, 30, and 40,000 respectively. It was stipulated that the profit will be distributed as follows. For Robbie, it would be 15%, Pon Pon 20%, Lenin 30%, and for Dana, it would be 35%. For the distribution of loses, the rules is the same as the rules above to the effect that the share of the partner in the losses shall be the share agreed upon. However, if they do not agree as to how much would be their share in the losses, then the share of each partner on the losses shall be in proportion to what he or she may have contributed. However, take note that the industrial partner shall not be liable for any losses. 2.4. Corporation Defined Failure to comply with the requirements of the preceding paragraph shall not under Section 2 of Batas Pamansa 68, otherwise known as Corporation Code of the Philippines. Corporation was defined as an artificial being created by the operation of law, having the right of succession and powers, attributes, and properties expressly authorized by law in descent to its existence. Be it noted that the artificial being pertains to the fiction of law which creates the person of the corporation. By operation of law, it can become a being with an attributes of individual with full of capacity to enter into contractual relationships. It is legal or juridical person with a personality separate and distinct from each individual member. Based on the definition provided by law, it can be deduced that our corporate form of business has the following attributes. It is artificial being. It is created by operation of law. It has a power of succession. It has a power, attributes, and properties expressly authorized by the law in this interreto. Creature of law, on the other hand, pertains to the juridical existence of the corporation which is dependent on the consent of grant of sovereign. From a strict legal point of view, a corporate cannot came into being to mere consent to the parties. There must be a law granting it. Once granted, it forms the primary franchise of the corporation. Another important attribute of corporate form of business is the right of succession. This pertains to the capacity of continuous existence despite the death or replacement of its stakeholder or members. For it has a personality separate and distinct from those who compose it. The strong legal personality of corporation is an attribute that has made it attractive to businessmen who compare to other media. Advantages of a corporate form of a business the following are the advantages of a corporate form of a business. Strong legal personality. The corporation has legal capacity to act and contract as a distinct unit in its own name. It has continuity of existence. As distinguished from partnership, has a strong legal personality having, having separate and distinct personality from the members composing it, unaffected by death resignation, or insolvency of any of its stockholders or members. Limited liability to investors. 
One of the advantages of a corporate form of a business organization is the limitation of an investor's liability to the amount of the investment. The feature flows from the legal theory that a corporate entity is separate and distinct from its stockholders. Free transferability of units of investment. In a corporate setting, as a general rule, the shares of stocks can be transferred without the consent of the other stockholders. This would be assure investors of a ready mechanism to dispose of their investments when their personal or financial situation may require it, and therefore places more liquidity in the corporate setting and would be better encourage investors to channel their investments through corporate vehicles. Centralized Management Corporation management is a centralized in the board of directors. Shareholders are not agents of the corporation, nor can they bind the corporation. Unlike in the partnership setting, each partner may bind the partnership even without the knowledge of the other partners. Therefore, in its legal relationship, a corporation presents more stable and efficient and efficient system of a government of a governance and dealing with third parties since management prerogative are centralized in its board of directors classifications of corporation as the stack when we say stock corporation, it is a private corporation which have a capital stock divided into shares and the stockholders are entitled to their shares of dividends or allotment of the corporate surplus profits based on their stock holdings or subscriptions. When we say non-stock corporations, it is a corporation which do not issue stock and are composed of members, not stockholders. They may be civic, charitable, religious, or professional organizations. Other kinds of corporations. First is the de jure corporations. It is the corporations which complied with all the requirements. De facto corporations. Those who failed to comply with one or two legal. When we say corporation sole, it is a composed of one member, a corporator, and generally the law requirements of the law applies to religious denominations. For example of that is the corporations of the sole Catholic Church is Cardinal Sin and his successor. When we say close corporations, this is usually owned and managed by a family. All the outstanding stocks are owned and managed by a family. Stocks are not open for public subscription. When we say open corporations, it all the members of corporations to exercise their right to vote, to elect the directions and other officers of the corporations, the stock are open. When we say ecclesiastical corporations, it is the corporations is established for religious purposes. When we say lay corporations, it is the corporations is established for any purposes other than religion. Corporate aggregate, it is composed of one member of corporate. When we say corporations by Estopal, it is the kind of corporations wherein members assume to act as corporations despite the knowledge, the non-existence of corporate personality. In this case, all the persons involved will be liable as general partners. Lastly, as the multinational corporations. It is the corporations organized in one state or country, but extends its corporate business in other territories or countries. Powers of the corporation. The powers of the corporations are classified into three, namely, first, express powers or the powers expressly granted by the law to the corporation such as those mentioned in section 36 of the corporation code the powers of the corporation may also expressly contain in the articles of incorporation and its bylaw second incidental powers 
are the powers which a corporation can exercise as incident to its corporate existence. For example, power of succession, power to adopt and amend its bylaw. Third, implied power are necessary to execute the express power granted to a corporation. For example, power to act in the course of business which must be within the express powers. Registration requirements in establishing business pertinent to the hospitality industry. Promotion of the different tourist destination in the country may be well settled through the opening of various businesses well supported by the respective local government units and in coordination in the Department of Tourism. In making said mandate possible, the regulatory power of the state through licensing of business may be used in this regard. Meanwhile, if you will decide to establish partnership and corporations as a form of business in the near future, it is necessary that you register with the EC or the Securities and Exchange Commission. However, if you would like to establish a single proprietorship or you want to have the control of everything in your business, the registration is through the DTI or the Department of Trade Industry. If you would like to avail the incentives provided under Executive Order 226 or the Omnibus Investment Code, registration with the Board of the Investments is a must. Registration is also needed if you would like to avail the incentives of the following investment promotion agencies to it. PESA, Philippine Economic Zone Authority, SBMA, Zubik Bay Metropolitan Authority, CDC, Clark Development Corporation, Cagayan Economic Zone Authority, Fivetic Industrial Authority, Zamboanga Economic Zone Authority. The registration of foreign investments for purposes of capital repatriation and profit remittance is under the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Before a business can be fully operated, it is a must that they, have, they secure the following TIN tax identification number under the Bureau of Internal Revenue Locational Clearance Business Permit for firms in the Metro Manila under the Social Security System membership in the Government Health Care Benefits System through the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, Electric Services Connection through the Meralco or Manila Electrico, Water Services through the Manila Water. Contract of Sale, Article 1458, by the contract of sale, one of the contracting parties obligate himself to transfer the ownership and to deliver a determinate thing, and the other to pay therefore a price certain in money or its equivalent. A contract of sale may be absolute or conditional. Law on Sales Another subject in the civil law is the law on sales. In tourism and hospitality industry, entering into a contract of sale is one of the many activities that the management is doing. Sale is a contract, hence, as a general rule, it is perfected from the time there is a meeting of the minds of the parties. The parties in this kind of contract are called the vendor or the seller and the vendee as the buyer. Both have the obligation to each other. The vendor is obliged to deliver and transfer ownership, while the vendee pays the price thereof. There shall be a legal consequences when this obligation is breached. Essential elements of a contract of sale. Sale by its very nature is a consensual contract because it is perfected by the mere consent. The essential elements of a contract of sale are the following. First is the consent of the meeting of the minds that is consent to transfer ownership in exchange for the price. Second, determinate subject matter or the object. And lastly, 
the price certain in money or its equivalent. The term equivalent may refer to the check or other negotiable instruments. Forms of contract of sale. The contract of sale is perfected at the moment there are meeting of the minds upon the thing which is object a contract and upon the price. From the moment the parties reciprocally demand performance subject to provisions of law governing the forms of contract. Thus, contract of sale may be made in writing or by word of mouth orally. In the following transaction, however, the contract must be in writing. Otherwise, the contract is unenforceable unless when there is already partial or complete execution. A. The sale of real property or land, building, or etc. B. Sale of movable property or personal property if the price thereof is 500 pesos or more. C. Sale must be performed or executed only after more than a year from the time of agreement. Sale of immovable property through an agent, special power of attorney is needed. When the sale of piece of land or any interest therein and through an agent, the authority in the latter shall be writing, otherwise the sale shall be void. Example, Mr. X is a Filipino citizen and is working in a big company in the United States of America. He owns a 300 square meter parcel of land located in Quezon City, Philippines, considering that has already decided to stay in America for good. He is now intent to sell the parcel of land. Through his cellular phone, he called up his cousin Isabella to look for a buyer. Isabella was able to look for one and that is Mr. Matt, a professor in tourism management uh, and an owner of various restaurants in Manila. Isabella then called up Mr. X informing him that he has already a buyer. Mr. X simply replied, All right, execute all necessary documents in my behalf. Mr. Matt and Isabella entered into a contract of sale. Issue Is the contract of sale valid? A contract of sale of a parcel of land must be in writing but not necessarily notarized. True, a con conveyance of land is not made in a public document, meaning not notarized. It does affect the validity. Issue Is the contract of sale valid? A contract of sale of a parcel of land must be in writing but not necessarily notarized though a conveyance of land is not made in a public document, meaning not notarized. It does not affect the val validity of such conveyance. Two kinds of sale. Number one, absolute sale. A contract of sale is absolute where the title to the property passes to the vendee upon delivery of the thing sold. A deed of sale is absolute when there is no stipulation Contract the title to the property remains with the seller until full payment of the purchase price. The sale is also absolute if there is no stipulation giving the vendor the right to cancel and illiterally. The contract the moment the vendor fails to pay within a fixed period. Number two, conditional sale. Ownership remains with the vendor and does not pass to the vendor until full payment. Of the purchase price, the full payment of the purchase price partakes of a suspensive condition and non-fulfillment of the condition prevents to the obligation to sell. Transfer Ownership Article 1477 The ownership of the ten sold shall be transferred to the vendee upon the actual or constructive delivery thereof. Perfection of contract of sale does not in itself transfer ownership. The ownership of the object of the contract is transferred 
by delivery, which may be actual or constructive, the law delivered when it placed in the hands of position of the vendor. What is the effect if the thing subject of the contract of sale was closed, deteriorated or damaged before after delivery? Number one, if the object has been lost before perfection of the contract, the seller bears the loss. This is because there is no contract, the seller remains to be the owner. Number two, if the object is lost after the same has been delivered to the buyer, then the buyer bears the loss. This is the doctrine of respirat domino. He who is the owner of the thing shall bear the risk of loss. Effect of the sale by a person who is not the owner of the thing sold. Where the goods are sold by a person who is not the owner thereof, the buyer acquires no better title than the seller had. The Rector Law The Rector Law was passed in order to protect the buyers on installment who more often than not have been victimized by sellers who, before the enactment of this law, succeed in unjustly enriching themselves at the expenses of the buyers because, aside from recovering the goods sold, the fault of the buyer in the payment of two installments still retain for themselves all amount already paid. And in addition, were a judge entitled to damages such as attorney's fees, expenses, litigations, and cost. This article states that in a contract of sale of personal property of price of which is payable in installments, the vendor may, may exercise any of the following remedies. First, exact fulfillment of obligations should the vendors fail to pay. Second, cancel the sale should the vendor's failure to pay cover two or more installments. Third, foreclose should tell mortgage on the thing sold. If one has been, should the vendor's failure to pay cover two or more installments. In this case, he shall have further actions against the purchaser to recover any un unpaid balance of the price. Any agreement to the con shall be void. Rectal law finds it applicable if, first, there is one absolute sale of contract of sale. Second, the object is personal property and not real property or land. And third, the transaction is installment.